The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. everyone. Welcome to Artist Corner. My name is Dana Barnes. I'm the president of the Greater Fall River Art Association. I'm very pleased to welcome um, my very special guest today, um, Gwendolyn Winters. She is Wilkins. one... Wilkins. Huh? Sorry, Wilkins. Wilkins. Sorry about that. Um, we have a... That's just a thing. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> she is one of our um, newest artists in residence. Um, she also is our uh, one and only teacher at the present time. She's been doing a lot of teaching of all ages for our, for our organization. She brings uh, great gifts to, and talents to this, to this organization. We're very happy to have her with us. And I'm very pleased to welcome you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. So tell me, tell me a little bit. Um, you're also one of the youngest uh, resident artists that we have. Um, so tell me a little bit about your your art journey. How did you start and where where are you now? Um, well, I've always liked art. Um, I don't know exactly where it started. Um, I mean, my mom has uh, her famous story about how in elementary school I did a watercolor painting of a frog and it, like it came out really good. And you know, everyone being like, oh, that's so amazing, kind of you know, made me think, you know, oh, could go, you know, I could go somewhere with this. And I did kind of start thinking of it as a, oh, this could be a career type thing from a pretty young age. Because I was just, I like to, to doodle and paint. Um, every Christmas I ended up getting art supplies. Nice. So, you know, I, I kind of did art um, all throughout my childhood. I took some uh, classes over the Ta Taunton Art Association. Um, and I did, you know, like AP art and wh any extra art that I could take, I did, you know. Um, and then I did attend Montserrat, um, which is up in Beverly. It's a little small art school. Um, and that was a really valuable experience. Um, yeah, but for a while I kind of was off the path. I wasn't doing art as much and everything. I was just working, living life, you know. Uh, I'm only 24, right. so, you know, kind of getting into college and realizing, oh, I have to pay for everything and have to do everything, <laughs> you know, that, that was definitely uh, a thing in college, right. you know, and I kind of got taken away from the art a little bit. So, and, you know, it's always been there on and off, but now that I'm back into the Art Association especially, um, you know, I've really gotten all into it and I'm back into that mindset of yeah this you know this is my life like I love doing art awesome um, yeah awesome. And it's you know it's really relit that fire yeah awesome yeah awesome um, so tell me about your favorite mediums I know that you are very fond of um, water-based oils and you're trying to get me and some of the rest of us um, coming along with you dragging, kicking, and screaming. Um, so talk to me about your favorite mediums and why, um, and what's your inspiration for, for using them? Um, well, yeah, I would definitely say oil is probably my number one. Um, I really like working with it, and I do like traditional and normal oil. When I work with traditional, I feel fancy because I have to use the, um, paint thinner but then you know I don't actually like having to deal with the paint thinner <laughs> but you know oil paint in general I really like um, I like I like the technique with or the process with oil paint whereas like acrylic dries automatically right. um, watercolor dries very quickly and is very 
you know, you can't just cover it up with anything. I like oil because it's so, it, it's so, it's so easy to play with, you know? Um, like it, it gives so much room because of the drying time and because it blends so well and the pigments can be so bright. Um, it really gives you an opportunity to take your time and, you know, and I think that's really important when you're doing art. Um, a lot of people, me included, <laughs> get really caught up on this, you know, this isn't right and this isn't, and oil is a good medium for that in my eyes because you have the time to say, okay, I can play with this and I can, it's not my watercolor painting that if, you know, I cover that white spot, I can never get it back, you know. Okay. You can always cover oil, you can just keep going, you know, and I really like that. You know, I'm doing right now, I'm doing the charcoal class for the kids and we were talking about why charcoal is good in that way too, where it can be same kind of same thing for oil and charcoal. They're frustrating but also cool for the same reasons where it blends easy and it, you know, and you kind of, you can kind of find the picture. It's not as much of a, you know, you pick up a pencil and you draw and you have a line on a paper right. and you feel so pressured to get it right. You know, I like mediums that kind of just let you play with it and awesome. go from there, you know. So tell me about your, um, about these, um, I learned about them and I'm sure lots of people out in the, in the, in the world know about them. Talk to me about these water soluble oil paints. I watched you instruct a, a group of young people doing that yeah. and they <clears throat> seem to be really fascinated with it. and it sort of fascinated me too because I my biggest grump and I've told you before with oil is that it takes forever to dry mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm not a really patient personally I'm not a really patient artist yeah. but I appreciate everybody who works in oils and it just fascinates me so tell me about the tell me about this this happy little medium well so for the uh, water soluble oil paints, they, it's actually, it's interesting because they obviously, water and oil don't mix, but they're not, they are still actually oil paints. Okay. Um, there's a, an additional solvent to it that makes it water soluble, but it is actually oil. It's just that it has an added component to make water be able to break it down. Um, which is cool because a lot of people don't, they're kind of turned off to them because they think they're not real oil paints um, and they think they're not gonna get as, you know, as nice of a result. Um, but it is, you know, you can get oil paints that are just as pigmented, pigmented um, just as thick and, you know, um, it's a really good medium. And the drying time definitely is uh, a bit lower. It's still oil paint, so you know, it's still, <laughs> it still takes a little bit. But um, yeah, no, it definitely, for it, you know, the water that evaporates out of it um, does help with the speeding, speeding up the drying time. That's also why it, it doesn't dry right away, is because it's still, still the oil. just oil paint, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, you know, there are also other mediums that you can mix into it into oil paint, um, you know, because there's linseed oil and, and things like that. But that was something specifically for that class, I was doing a lot of research on different mediums you can mix into oil paint. Right. And I didn't even realize how, how much you really can change the consistency, the drying time. Um, it's, you know, definitely an experimentation thing because it affects things like the color or the luster of your paint. Um, but you know, there's definitely a lot of room to make that medium work better for you. Awesome. Yeah. The, the cleanup. Um, I'll get you there. I, I, <laughs> yeah. The cleanup, um, I, I noticed, was a lot easier, especially oh, with yeah. young people. You know, oh, instead yes. of trying to use either turpentine or linseed mm -hmm. oil or something like That's that, the they could literally piece. go downstairs to the slop sink in the yeah. art association and clean with soap and water. Yeah. Which I always think is a especially for young artists, I think is really important the mm -hmm. ease of cleanup because nobody has enough patience to, oh, you, know, and, uh, you know, just have your brush tucked into a, a linseed, you know, soak yeah. for a while and then somebody has to come back and clean it, yeah. you know, three or four days later when it's all yeah, done. Properly dispose of everything. Exactly. It's you not make going sure down you don't have drain. something with fumes, you know, right. the whole nine. Yeah, that honestly, that's my biggest reason that I like the water soluble paints is because it's just so much easier to clean up. Um, I'm a very messy 
artist, messy person, you know, my That's why I like students you. are, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, you know, my students are messy and I always tell them like, art is messy, I'm messy. And it's nice when the messy things aren't gonna stain everything that right. touches. And oil paint definitely oh, yeah. will stain everything. And the water soluble, you've got a much better chance of being able to um, fix that situation. <laughs> I have done it with both water soluble and not. <laughs> Trust me, it's a little easier. <laughs> nice. So um, I also have, have said that you are our, our instructor um, for the time being. Miss um, um, Gwen has all of the ages of all of the classes at this time. Um, she's teaching, <clears throat> she's instructing our, our youngest ones. Um, ages six to nine. She's also instructing our middles, as we call them, tens to twelves. She's also taking on the teenage group, which we're developing again for September. Um, and she's also doing some uh, one-off kinds of classes, uh, um, instructional opportunities for ages um, like 10 to 14 who want to try some things. So talk to me about the charcoal. Why did you pick the, why why go with charcoal for this? I know we did uh, one water soluble oils. Talk mm -hmm. to me about the charcoal. Um, so originally the charcoal um, actually came from uh, one of my students um, who she, you know, she takes my Saturday class and she took the oil class, very, very talented. Um, and she wanted to do uh, charcoal. Um, and so she was the original idea, but I automatically loved the idea because I really enjoy wor working with charcoal. Um, and I think it's a really good follow-up from oil because a lot of the same, a lot of the same limitations and benefits of, you know, of those mediums are similar. Like I said about, they both blend very easily and that's a gift and a curse. And that's something to let be a friend, not a, uh, why can't, you know, why can't I get a line? You know, okay. like I, that's something I was saying to them in uh, class yesterday, uh, you know, you don't, you don't always need to have a line. You know, charcoal sometimes lets you have ambiguous areas and things like that. And I think, especially for that age group, that is good. Um, it's a constant reminder of you don't have to be perfect. Don't try to be perfect and to trust the process. Um, and I, I feel like that's a good medium for that. It's very forgiving. You know, you make a mark, it, you can cover that mark up or erase it. You know, it, I think it's a, I think it's a really good medium to start with. Um, <clears throat> and I would like, and I'd like to introduce the kids to different mediums, you know, not everyone has as much interest in different things. Um, and this is kind of a good opportunity to dive into that one uh, material, you know. I like it, yeah. I like it. I noticed the um, young ones last night were, they seemed to be having a good time. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that we are at the association attempting to <clears throat> sort of structure a little more some of these mm -hmm. um, educational opportunities that we have. Um, and I think that you're, even the littles are, are enjoying some of that structure. Um, they still want to make a mess and play all over the yeah. place, but and I. Yeah, that could I, be But both. that's fine. Yeah. But you know what? They're yeah. they're learning with things with that too. Mm -hmm. So tell me about tell me about um, what your process is when you're going through trying to figure out about these classes. I know you've been working really hard on on trying to put together meaningful yeah. programming and things like that. So tell me, um, you are a young artist. You are a young female artist, you're a young woman, um, your life experiences are, are only 24 years, <laughs> unlike mine. Um, so I, I wondered how did you, how did you arrive at the, at, at how you wanted to do this, you know? Well, uh, a lot of research for okay. one, um, because, you know, I, like I've been trying to see where kids are at their, you know, and a lot of it, you know, I say research and I do mean looking at articles and websites and whatever, but also just watching the kids and I ask them questions all the time about what they find challenging, what they like to do, things like that. Um, because figuring out what was appropriate for what age level is, you know, has been a bit of a learning curve. But 
you know, there's a lot of concepts that are important the entire time you're learning. And there's a way to say it to a six-year-old, and there is a way to say it to a 10-year-old, and there's a way to say it to an 18-year-old. You know, um, like the elements of art will always be huge, you know. Um, that's the building block of really any piece of art. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're using the elements of art. You know, and that's something that you can introduce as a, as a um, young kid and it will be relevant the entire time you're an artist. So I've been thinking about those things and, you know, just a mix of my time as an artist and trying to look up more formal sources as well. Um, I've been putting a lot of thought into that. What, how do we get, how do we get them started at the, that age and right. get them working? And it, you know, those things like the elements of art, principle of design, um, different techniques and different styles of paintings, uh, you know, that's how we can explore those things. And, you know, and it's, a lot of it is being subtle because kids aren't looking to come in and sit down and have a class where they listen to me lecture. But the, you don't need that to get the point across, you know. Continuing to use the words like color theory and composition and getting them familiar with terms and ideas and asking questions, well, you know, what would happen if you did this? And getting them to explore things on their own. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, yeah. from my experience, but then also them teaching me you know, they are little as teachers, we go. I'll tell you. They, they sure are. They are definitely little teachers. They sure are. Some of them will tell you they don't want to do, um, I know we have one in, our, in, in your Sunday class who absolutely yes. wants to draw cars. I'm thinking he's yeah. probably going to go to work for Ford or yeah. somebody yeah. somewhere <laughs> along the line. Yeah. Um, Loves them. He absolutely does. Mm -hmm. He absolutely does. And that is his jam. Mm -hmm. You know, that is all about what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So how do, we, how do we, as an organization and you as a teacher, work with someone who has a real targeted interest? How do we um, maybe encourage him to, yes, do that, work with his targeted interest, but also maybe sort of gently guide him to another, to something a little bit more? Well, um, you know, I think that Going on again with, you know, things like the elements of art and things like that. Um, you know, like with in his case, he wants to draw hit the cars and he wants to draw them specifically in marker or pen. Um, that's, you know, like you said, that's his jam. Okay. Um, and he only, he actually only, his mom was just telling me about his art journey and he only just picked it up recently and he definitely is already showing uh, you know, a lot of talent for someone who just started drawing, yes. you know. He definitely has an eye for detail and is trying to pay attention to things like proportion, things like that. Um, and, you know, I've been thinking about him. Uh, I think that and when I am thinking of lessons for each age group, I try to keep this in mind. Not every artist wants to paint or draw or, you know, People have different skill levels, but also different interests. Um, and you know, like someone like this student, um, how can I have him still have this piece that he likes, but incorporate uh, something else? So I was thinking uh, with him, you know, like collage work is big. Um, I like. I like, you know, we, we've discussed this, yeah, I like collage work where you draw and paint. Right. Um, you know, and that's something like we can incorporate there. He awesome. can draw his cars and, and then, then we can turn it into a three-dimensional thing or we can turn it into a collage and, you know, thinking creatively, how do you make this car differently? At least start with a different thought, right. you know. Right, and yeah. I know some of the, the littles, <clears throat> some of them are very much, all they want to do is, is draw, I know we have, all manner of opportunity for them to use all manner of, of artist mediums mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, <clears throat> and I know we try to give them every opportunity to try like oil pastels or acrylic pastels or watercolors or acrylic paints or modeling clay, um, collage, mm -hmm. um, assemblage um, and things like that. Um, how, how how do you reach them? Because you have reached them. 
You have reached a lot of them. I've, I've watched the classes and I know that you've reached <coughs> a lot of them where they're at. And I'm noticing a lot of growth um, in, in the ones that are there. And I, I, I see that. And I, I just wondered how do you how do you get the kid who wants to do collage, doesn't want to do anything else, the kid who wants to draw, everybody else who will do whatever you want them to do, and oh, by the way, I don't want to do any of that, I want to play with clay. Yeah. How are you, how are you, how are you handling that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, one, I'll <clears throat> say uh, thank you for saying that you, you see that, because yep. that is good to hear, um, because I definitely, you know, I put a lot of thought and effort into each individual student and what they want to do, what their skill level is. Because like you said, like I do want to meet everyone where they are. You know, I think in art that's especially that's really important. You know, art is all about self expression and you know, it's supposed to be a piece of you and I think everyone should be able to do that. Um, but so, well so you know I said like they're a big piece of my research. I ask them a lot. I ask them questions. You know, I will ask them. You know, a, and it, it's kind of it's one of those things you do. Ha you have to guide the questions. Right. You know, what do you like? Oh, well, I like everything. Okay. Well, <laughs> when we, you know, when we paint, is you know, is coming up with the idea the hard part, or is it painting is the hard part? And you kind of have to coax it out of them, but. With kids in general, a lot of the time, they just need to be talked to. Um, and it, it's funny because I think as we become adults, like we're just on a different wavelength than kids are. And adults kind of look at kids like, they don't know what they're talking about. And they look at us the same way, right. you know, because you, a, a lot of adults don't remember what it's like to be a kid. Right. You know, most of the time I don't, but when I'm talking to my kids, I try to put myself in their shoes, you know. Um, and ask them from there. And I think dealing with people in general, but also dealing with kids, that's really a big piece of it is, you know, just communication. Excellent. Like, this is what I'm looking for from you guys. If, if you're looking for something different, why is that? Let's get somewhere with that. Perfect. Yeah. So let me circle back around to your personal art. Where do you see your, um, where do you see your growing as an artist? Because I've seen, your work. I know you do a lot of portraiture. I've seen a lot of portraiture in your, in your studio. So talk to me about where where do you, where do you want to do with your art? That's a good question. Now that you're going, <laughs> now that you're going back to it and you're you're learning to, to love it again. Yeah. You're reacquainting yourself with this yeah. gift that you have. What do, what do you want to do with it? <laughs> what would you like to do with that? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I thought so. Um, it's one of those questions you told me to ask. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, my, my mom actually just recently, like we were having a conversation, she said something about, like, where do you want to be in 10 years? And I was like, oh, I don't know where I'm gonna be. And she's like, no, I'm not where you are gonna be, where do you wanna be? And you don't have to say what job you want, like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know, I want to be somewhere warm, eating fruit and painting, you know? And like, and I've kinda tried to, keep that mentality. She's like, oh, that's simple. That is simple. I, I want to keep that mentality because I'm not sure where I want my art car career to end up. Um, you know, I've thought about um, like getting involved in e-commerce and trying to sell some of my designs um, as different types of products and stuff like that. Also just prints, but other products um, because I also am interested in that as well. Um, but, you know, being involved with the Art Association now, I'm meeting other artists, I'm meeting uh, art collectors, and, you know, d just a different group of people I hadn't been exposed to. So right now I'm kind of in that process of figuring out what I want to do. I just want to make sure whatever I do, I don't take the passion out of it. Absolutely. You Keep know? the passion. Keep that passion. I know that um, the artists in residence will have their show in the main gallery um, beginning in September. So all of us who are happy, um, joyful artists in residence will have their, their artwork um, hang for the, for the main gallery, um, and as well as having their studios open at various different mm -hmm. times. Um, I know we're also gonna be participating in a fall open uh, studio call again in October. So I think that 
it will be a great opportunity for you as a as an artist in residence to step out of the teaching role that yes. you're so focused in. Yeah. And and it's so ne it's so necessary there. Yeah. I can't tell you. I I watch a lot of those kids come and go, and they really do like. They're happy and joyful coming up, running up and down the stairs and running yeah. all over the place. Look what I did today. Yeah. Um, and I want to make sure that you as an artist and as a gifted artist also have an opportunity to express yourself and have your art be in that building um, and hanging on walls too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm, you know, I'm really excited about that, like the upcoming show and the open studio, because, you know, like, you know, um, Last time we had an open studio, I had just, just moved in. Yep. Uh, didn't have any complete work. Half my stuff was still put away. Um, and I haven't really been able to be involved with a show or an open studio with my work like that. So now, you know, I, I am gonna submit as much as I can Perfect. to the upcoming show, and I'm really excited about that. It's like I said, you know, it's, I'm not 100% sure where it's going, but I definitely feel as though I'm in the right place to walk in the right direction. You know, I've, I've loved working with the Art Association. I really like the people there. Um, and, you know, and it really is, it, it's helping with the art in a lot of ways. I'm inspired to be there okay. in general, you yes. know, and it motivates me to want to do these things. Excellent. And now that the class is kind of getting that structure down, I can go back to, okay, what do I want to do with my time? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because you, you like I said, you're a, you're a gifted artist, and um, I have had the pleasure of seeing um, your work hanging in, in your studio. If you had to do, is there any form of art? Let me change that. If you, if is there any, um, art um, form of artwork that you have not yet tried that you want to try? Mm, that I haven't tried. Or that you want to explore more. That you might maybe you did try it and it's like well maybe not well um i will say that we were talking about uh doing a watercolor course mm -hmm. after the charcoal because for the charcoal we're doing four weeks of an introduction and then it's going to be four weeks of portraiture um you know, like like you said that that's <laughs> my favorite um and i think charcoal is a good place to start with portraits okay um but I'm thinking after that we might do watercolor. Okay. Um, and that's, that's a big step for me because I have worked with watercolor plenty of times. Um, and you know, I've, I've used it in class, I've used it in my own time, but it is not my medium of choice. Really? Yes, watercolor is, can be very frustrating oh. for me. Yeah, you know, it's like I said, I love my oil paints and the fact that I can keep adding to them and I can keep, you know, whereas watercolor feels so daunting to me. It's like, oh, this fresh page, if I mess it up, you know. Um, so it's always been a, a kind of a difficult medium for me. Uh, when I got into watercolor pencils, I actually had, I love I've them. had a, yeah, I have a really fun time I with those. Them. That is what made me say, okay. Yeah, watercolor is actually all right, yep. you know. We'll go with the pencil parts instead yeah. of all of that. And that, you know, and that is something that I'm excited to explore more as I as I put that together because I want to get back Perfect. into that. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I can tell you this has been a wonderful experience. I'm so happy that you said yes um, to doing <laughs> this. And um, uh, you can... Um, Follow uh, Miss Gwen at um, at the Art Association. If you have anyone who wants to have a class with her, she's a phenomenal teacher. We have many classes available, many opportunities for students of all ages to learn from her. Um, and I, as one of the older folks in the building, look forward to um, seeing where you go and learning from you. Um, and I might go kicking and screaming into water soluble <laughs> oils. Oh, I can't wait. You'll get there. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you.